So I went to Amsterdam recently, uh, last month, the month of November, so it was very, very cold still and raining a lot. I absolutely love the Netherlands. I, I think Dutch culture, uh, Dutch cuisine, Dutch people are, it's just amazing. Uh, the people there are lovely. It was probably one of my favorite trips I've done. Um, city breaks, what, what, definitely up there. So yeah, I went out on the Friday, got the Lizzie line over to Heathrow Terminal 5 and flew with British Airways to Amsterdam. And then we flew home on the Sunday night, which was a whole drama, but we got home and I was back at work on the Monday. So yeah, very quick trip with those city breaks. I really don't think you need a lot of time. So yeah, Amsterdam is uh, an immense city. It, it's very similar to a lot of other European towns and cities I'm sure we're aware of because you know, we're in Europe, but it is so so unique in its own way that I think it's one of the only places I've been where I've gone I could actually see myself living here I, I'd want to live here it's just stunning it's beautiful every angle you turn there's something down uh, the next canal next high street whatever there's there's always something to do I think we went for the perfect amount of time obviously we went at a very specific type of year where it, everything was uh, had to be inside because you'd get absolutely drenched on uh, here's some of the bits that I got from Amsterdam. I'm starting to collect keychains. Um, this is the one I got from Amsterdam. It's a mug that says Amsterdam. Surprise, surprise. I also brought home uh, this bad boy. This is a tin from a uh, load of Struppenwaffle, uh, which I think I'm pronouncing, I hopefully I'm pronouncing correctly. It's a Never Netherlands delicacy. Um, and this is a really, really lovely tin that come along. I don't know what to do with it yet. Like, I, I always get things like this and I don't know what to put in it. Um, for now, it just sits on my side. But inside that was uh, Stroopin' Waffles, which if you haven't had them before, they're like pancake-shaped, a circle, like a sweet treat that's like a flattened waffle uh, of caramel in between, and they are just the best thing ever. I had so many when I was out there, and I took some home as well for my parents. I also got a hat. Uh, it says stuff on it. It's from Berkshire, and Berkshire is like the European Zara. I know we have a few over here. Uh, which I didn't realise until I walked out on Oxford Circus literally the week after. My friend Joe, who I went with, they got a, uh, a lovely t-shirt which had a cow on it. But yeah, uh, I got a few souvenirs from my parents. I was travelling with a tiny bag. Uh, this was from Decathlon. It was £7, no way an ad. Um, it is fantastic. This tiny little bag, £7, as I said. Uh, got it from Decathlon. It folds out like this. Bing bang bosh. Look at this bad boy. I mean, it's it's not big, it's not big, but this is like kind of certain it's gonna fit in any holdall. Yeah, we we stayed in a hostel, which is really nice. Uh, we've stayed, I've stayed with this company before when I went to Berlin, and I thought I'd stay with them again because I really enjoyed their experience in Berlin. They have their own bars because a lot of people who are staying in hostels are kind of hopping around. That means they have like kitchen, kitchenettes, you know, all the amenities that you need. But Amsterdam is one of those cities where I'm like, this is the perfect city for a tourist and also for a cheap trip. Well, a big issue with London airports is that they're so far outside of London, apart from City Airport, it's such a nightmare to get into London. Whereas Amsterdam, which is so great about it, it's only 16 minutes on a train between uh, the airport and city centre. There's one stop between the airport and the city centre, and that stop uh, is a station called Schlotterdijk. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It doesn't sound right, but Schlotterdijk, it's how it looks. That's where we were staying. So it's, and also with Amsterdam, I don't think you need to be staying in the city center. Uh, it's very easy to get from the outside to the inside because there's the trams, there's the underground, as well as the, the overground trains, as well as, you know, taxi ranks, all of the above. The taxis are really expensive, which we've discovered, but if you can stick to that public transport, you're, you're sorted. Uh, but there is a app here to download if you're going to Amsterdam. It has all the public transport stuff. It's not the best app in the world, but also it lets us know the train times, which is really super duper helpful. Also, when we were in our hostel, um, they put us in the room of four people, even though we booked a room of seven people. Um, and also the people sharing a hostel with the other two people in the room, they weren't there. So we didn't actually see them for the whole journey. Uh, until it was 2 a.m. and they came through the door, obviously. Um, you kind of expect that in a hostel. Um, but then they went straight to bed, so we didn't get to, didn't speak to them at all, which, in, in the nicest way possible, was quite nice because we were both exhausted. They woke us up the next morning, not by on purpose, but just them waking up and getting dressed because they were checking out that morning, our hostel buddies. And something really weird happened because they woke up and then one of them like went to the shower, had a shower, cool, like we were like, cool, whatever. Then they got back into bed and fell asleep. And then Joe and I got up and got changed and left and 
they were still asleep. And they were supposed to be checking out at 11. And when we left, it was like half 12. So that was really strange. But we did buy a lock for us to share um, our locker with. So that's where Joe and I kept all our bits and bobs. I just took a little thing over Uniqlo bag, um, which was really handy. Get on, here it is. Uh, I bought this from Uniqlo. Uh, I got mine embroidered as well. If I was ever on set, you know, for take 22, I thought that was pretty cool. It is super duper handy. You can carry so much stuff in it. But for traveling, oh, there's a euro in here. There's three euros in here. It's tiny and it fits in your bag perfectly. And also it means I don't have to carry around this big, biggish bag around Amsterdam. It's great. You can carry a book in there if you want to. Got the train straight into Amsterdam Central. And then we walked around for a bit. And then the Dutch Pancake Factory, which I thought was going to be a bit tourist trappy. Obviously, there's a lot of tourists there because... When you call yourself the, the Pancake Factory, of course you, you are. But, well, first of all, I had it in my book that I took out there. Whenever I go somewhere, I like to get a book about the place. Because uh, this is the book I had. It was about Lonely Planet. Uh, and it suggested this place, the Dutch Pancake Factory. Again, as I said, I thought it was going to be a bit tourist trappy. But this was the meal I had. It was a bacon pancake. And I tell you what, this was probably the best meal I had in the whole trip. It was absolutely fantastic. And also, the coffee there was just... Also, the coffee in uh, the Netherlands is just, for some reason, amazing. But yeah, had that and then went walking around. Again, Amsterdam's so easy to get around because you just walk. They have so many of like shops we have in Britain, um, such as like there's a JD spot. Holland and Barrett was there, which I find mind-boggling that there's Holland and Barrett internationally. And we walked down towards the kind of the museum districty area and um, we couldn't get in. We couldn't get into the museum. Also, the museum's there are like 20 euros, 30 euros a head, uh, which is ridiculous. I, I I think museums shouldn't, you shouldn't have to pay, obviously, donations, but which I think is ridiculous, you know, um, it's education. I don't know, uh, I guess I'm used to the, the luxury of, in London, you know, the Natural History Museum a lot, the majority of the museums in London are free. Like, I haven't ever had to pay for a museum uh, in London, which is amazing. It's the best thing that these, these resources are open to everyone. So it's kind of a, that's always a, a big thing for me when I travel, I, I always forget about that. And it's one of the reasons I love London so much. So we found ourselves in an Irish pub, uh, which was surprisingly busy. Um, and then we realized the reason why it was so busy is because there was a game versus Ireland versus Netherlands happening in Amsterdam that night. So that's why the Irish pub was so busy. Uh, and then we tried to find a restaurant to eat in and uh, failed very, very much. Uh, couldn't book in anywhere which is a big shame. The issue traveling abroad is sometimes that these, these books don't really do kind of student or you know young person friendly places. Uh, a lot of the restaurant recommendations in here uh, were for, well, way out of our price range. Let's just say that Joe and I were very happy with kind of anything that was from a local place. Uh, we ended up finding a place called uh, Dante's, I'm pretty sure. I, I had kind of like your, your basic half chicken, Frenchy, cuisine type, uh, very accessible. It also was kind of in the same price range of, that you'd get at like a Nando's or something like that. But the only issue there was it just took ages. Like by the time we got out of the restaurant, it was I think 11 o'clock, 11.30. Fortunately, the nightlife in Amsterdam goes on forever. So that's fantastic. And I ended up finding this bar um, through here, uh, which was called The Waterhole. Um, and we saw a band called the T42 band and they have live music every night at The Waterhole. And I tell you what, it's probably the best bar nightlife experiences I've had wherever I've been, but especially abroad, because uh, the live band were fantastic. Uh, also, they turns out they were from where I'm from, like East London way, uh, near me, like Basildon and Romford, um, which is crazy that I've gone out all that way and then found a local band, uh, <laughs> which was really weird. Uh, we got speaking to them uh, by the end of the night and they did so many classics and they were on until 4 a.m. So we got there at 11 and literally watched them for the whole time. We got through a lot of drinks um, and the prices were like London prices for a night out, um, averaging roughly around six euros, seven euros a pint. And also in this bar, it was a mixture between people our age and a bit older, which was nice. We, were looking, we weren't looking for anything like mental and crazy. So it was kind of a nice in between for us. We, we had a lovely time there and then we got home, tried to get home and we had to end up booking a taxi. Talk about the next morning, we were uh, <laughs> a bit worse for wear, got up and went out to do our Heineken experience. Not gonna lie, should have had the foresight to think that maybe after a night out, the last thing we want to do is alcohol tasting. Yeah, it was kind of a bad foresight from myself. Uh, <laughs> and then we were kind of forced to, to drink 
Heineken. And do you know what? The experience was was a strange one. There was like a ride that you stood on and it vibrated you, which again made us feel quite ill. If you're not interested in beer, probably not the thing for you, but it was uh, quite cool. We got to see how the whole process gets made. You know, then we did a bit more shopping, looked around some more of the other areas of, of Amsterdam. By that time, it was time to go. So we uh, got the metro underneath towards the station and head back to a hostel, picking up our bags from the lockers, because obviously we had to check out. Got on the airplane and uh, the flights were delayed. So that was fantastic. And obviously we landed in the UK quarter to 12, which was a nightmare because it was originally supposed to be a 10 o'clock flight and we would have just made the last train. Uh, fortunately, my parents were so kind to offer a lift and Joe managed to get home via the, um, via the bus. But obviously not a great experience being stuck uh, in another country and you have work the next day. Uh, but uh, there was no other flight. We tried to change it during the day. And the only other flight that was flying out was flying out at the same exact time, just to a different London airport. And that flight was fully booked. Not ideal, but we got home all safe. Um, some things I would probably recommend is um, book places to eat beforehand. I kind of That's kind of a general thing. I think across Europe, I, every time I've been to Europe, always struggle to find somewhere to eat. It's the same in Paris, same in Berlin, same in yeah, anywhere. Do your research into restaurants before going. I think the only place I, I researched places to eat was in Venice. And that was fantastic. But also book experiences, look into what museums you want to do. There's a lot of museums. And the worst thing ever is if you book a museum and then you go in there and you go, oh, I'm not actually interested in any of this. So do your research on what you want to go into before you go. Try out some of the local dialects and, and speak to Dutch people. They're lovely. And um, yeah, really have a good time. Can't recommend Amsterdam enough. Yeah, thank you for watching. And um, yeah, hopefully I will, uh, I will see you on the next adventure and hopefully I'll record a bit more of it. When I've been working around cameras so much, the last thing I wanted to do when going on holiday was bring a camera, so it's quite nice to kind of this in between. So yeah, have a good night and uh, get exploring. Ela sempre chega, vestida, salto alto, sai colorida, nunca passa despercebida, feita para se apaixonar.